Church, and it's good to have you here. Um, we're in for a treat this morning. We've only done this uh, once before in the history of our church. Are, am I okay, or is there an echo problem? I'm, I'm sounding. Yeah. You want me to use the mic, Dale? No? You're okay? You guys can hear us. I can hear it in my ear. We're, um, we're in for a treat this morning. We've only done video teaching once before in the history of our church, and I think this topic on health and fitness is so critical, I didn't even want to take the research from Dr. Amen and do it. I, I, this uh, uh, video teaching is off the internet. Um, Saddleback Community Church did a series on health also about the Daniel plan. They actually did a seminar, and it wasn't uh, on Sunday morning teaching. And you can Google that. It's called the Daniel plan. And Rick Warren and the entire church, or some people in that, are involved in a year-long diet plan of, ha- of changing their healthy ha- habits. I think he's already lost about 38 pounds. And this is a, a process that they're talking about. So the video will kind of refer sometimes to that, and that's what the context of that is. But how many of you have heard of Dr. Amen? You just raise your hands, PBS. So there's a good portion of you. You're in for a huge treat today. He's going to talk about the brain and how it is the entire health process of, of your body. And when you take care of your brain, you take care of the rest of your body. Obviously, an illustration spiritually, when we take care of our spiritual life with Jesus as the head of church, We take care of our spiritual body. And our premise in this series is pretty serious, is that we believe that healthy Christians produce a better gospel, help share about the Lord Jesus Christ. Healthiness, we talked about, is not an end in itself. Jesus is. But healthy Christians actually go to church more, actually feel better about themselves, and when the word of God is infiltrated in their lives, along with health, there's a power like no one others. And we really feel responsible in our church to begin to share about this. And so we're going to hear Dr. Amen, and I'll come afterwards. We have uh, his list of good, healthy food for your brain. It's in the back. You can go on the center or the saint side back there. We even provided a little donuts for you and your kids if you want some. A little balanced life, your choice. But without further ado, why don't we watch Dr. Amen, and then I'll come and share a little bit afterwards. Take care. You're not going to be that happy with me in about 20 minutes. (laughs) Let's see. My being here today is an answer to prayer. Um, I have a new book coming out next month called The Amen Solution, and while I was writing it, uh, my wife and I went to church with our seven-year-old. And as Tana brought Chloe to church, I said, I'll go save seats for us. And as I walked into church, I saw hundreds of donuts for sale. (laughs) And then as I turned the corner, I saw bacon and sausage cooking on the grill. And as I walked into the sanctuary, I saw thousands of hot dogs they were preparing for after church. And I'm really irritated. (laughs) And as I sat down, the pastor was talking about the ice cream social (laughs) they had the night before. And I'm like, just beyond. And I'm typing on my Blackberry when my wife finds me in church. And Tana gave me that look that only your wife can give you. (laughs) Like, why are you on that thing in church? And so I showed her what I was typing. Go to church, get donuts, hot dogs, bacon, sausage, ice cream. They have no idea they're sending people to heaven early. (laughs) That's not the plan. And so many churches in America are killing people with the food, the potlucks, what you give to your pastor, what the pastor gives to you as far as food, is damaging your health. And if it damages your health, guess what? It begins to kill your soul because they are 
connected. We're going the wrong way in our country. Nearly everywhere we go, we're being surrounded by the wrong messages. They're the foot-long hot dogs at the ballpark, right? Huge meal portions at restaurants. You're asked to supersize everything for less money. I was recently driving down the 405, going to LAX, and I saw this billboard for huge fast food sandwich. <laughs> and then no lie, as I turn my head to the other side of the freeway, <laughs> I saw this billboard about losing weight with lap band. It's like, how crazy is this? continually make bad decisions, and then pretty soon you're going to need surgery in order to get your inner child under control. <laughs> we need a better way. As I sat in that service with my wife, I prayed to God to use me to create brain-healthy churches. Two weeks later, Pastor Warren calls me. <laughs> and Pastor Rick mentioned this Bible verse, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. It's not your body. It was given to you as a gift. And putting continual bad food in it is trashing the house God gave you. It's like you're living in the barrio on purpose. Come on, let's not trash something that is a temple. Uh, how I got interested in physical health, I'm a psychiatrist by training, is a number of years ago I wrote a 12-week home study course for conquering anxiety and depression and we tested it on people all across the country and when I was on the follow-up calls it worked for anxiety and depression which I had expected but what I didn't expect is some people were telling me they lost 20 and 30 pounds without trying and that's when I realized that with a better brain you also get a better body so what motivates you? Is it health or is it fear? Some people need fear. So here it goes. Alzheimer's disease is expected to triple. There is no cure for it on the horizon. Alzheimer's disease starts 30 years before you have any symptoms. The best prevention strategy is to decrease the risk, the illnesses that are associated with Alzheimer's disease, like obesity, heart disease, diabetes, depression, and sleep apnea. The Daniel Plan will help you with all of those. We do brain imaging at the Amen Clinics. On the left is a healthy spec scan, full, even, symmetrical activity. We're looking at blood flow. On the right is a 59-year-old woman that has Alzheimer's disease. You do not want that, which means you need to take care of the illnesses that put you at risk for it. Depression is one of the greatest killers of our time. It affects over 50 million Americans at some point of their lives. And did you know, depression, if you have depression, all by itself, it is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, cancer, obesity, and diabetes. We are going to give you a plan to dramatically decrease your risk of depression. And obesity is a serious national crisis. Two-thirds of us are overweight, one-third obese. It's a risk factor for 30 different medical illnesses, including Alzheimer's disease, depression, cancer, diabetes. The Daniel Plan will help you lose weight and trim pounds. But that's not the point. The point is to get healthy. All of these illnesses are connected. Dr. Hyman is going to talk about that. We need to not think of these as single or simple disorders, but rather they are connected and the result of an unhealthy lifestyle. 
To show you how these are connected, there is horrifying new research that shows as your weight goes up, the actual physical size of your brain goes down. And when it comes to the brain, size matters. <laughs> when I read that research, I thought, well, that should scare the fat off anyone. <laughs> we just got uh, one of our papers accepted in the Nature Journal, Obesity, that also showed as your weight goes up, your frontal lobes go down. They're very important. It's the judgment part of your brain. And your thinking and reasoning go down. So if you don't get your weight under control, it's damaging your brain, and you are not going to be as smart as you need to be to get your health under control. If you're overweight or obese, you need to think of this as emer an emergency. That doesn't mean go get the lap band do the program. And if you do the program and it doesn't work, then I'd go think about the lap band, because that can work. It's just not the first thing to think about. The fat on your body is not your friend. It's a storage place, not only for excess calories, but for toxins and produces inflammation that damages every other organ in your body, including your brain. All right, how'd I do? Anybody afraid? <laughs> Some anxiety is good. People with low levels of anxiety go to jail. <laughs> or they make bad decisions with their health. You heard what I said earlier, right? As your weight goes up, the size of your brain goes down. As your weight goes up, your ability to think and reason go down. So one of the reasons I wrote Change Your Brain, Change Your Body was to get people really clear that your physical health matters to your mental health. So in the next hour, I'm going to teach you how to prevent Alzheimer's disease. I'm going to teach you how to decrease your risk for Alzheimer's disease, depression, and in the process, obesity. Your brain's involved in everything you do. How you think, how you feel, how you act, how you get along with other people has to do with the moment-by-moment -moment functioning of your brain. At the Amen Clinics over the last 20 years, we have done over 62,000 brain scans. We've done more brain scans, we've looked at more brains than any uh, clinic on the universe, in the universe. And it's very clear to us that when your brain is healthy, your judgment is better, you're nicer, your personality is better, you have more integrity, your character is better, and you are smart. When your brain works right, you work right. And when your brain has trouble, you are much more likely to have trouble in your life. So the image on the left is of a healthy SPECT scan. So SPECT, again, is the study we do at the Amen Clinics. Looks at blood flow and activity patterns. The image on the right is an alcoholic's brain. So when I first started doing brain imaging in 1991, I was the director of a dual diagnosis unit. It's a psychiatric hospital unit that takes care of substance abusers. And we would look at um, some of our normal people, and then we'd look at our substance abusers, and their scans look so awful. I brought them home to my three children. <laughs> and I effectively induced anxiety disorders in all three of them when it came to substance abuse. And it became very clear to me that your behavior, day in and day out, impacts the health of your brain, which then impacts the health of the decisions that you make in your life. You with me? So with a healthy brain, you're happier, healthier physically, you're wealthier 
Why? So as in the decade of destiny, Rick talks to you about your finances, they will be so much better managed if you take care of your brain because you'll be more thoughtful, you'll make better decisions. You'll be wiser, more consistent. I don't know why this says less consistent. I wonder who did this. All right, you get the point. Here are 360 year old scans. So there's an Alzheimer's brain on the left. Someone who's overweight who has sleep apnea. Do you know what sleep apnea is? It's where you stop breathing multiple times at night, you snore loudly, you're chronically tired during the day. Did you know that doubles your risk for Alzheimer's disease? When we look at the scans, we can tell the brains look toxic. And so many men have been diagnosed with sleep apnea and like men tend to do, well, they just deny they ever went to the doctor. And even though they maybe picked up the machine or not, they don't use it. And what they're doing is they're making themselves dumber and dumber and dumber over time. If you've been diagnosed with it, take it seriously. And you know the best treatment for sleep apnea is weight loss and a healthy brain. So which brain do you want? I mean, I don't know about you. I'm pretty clear which one I want. The healthy brain, which means you have to make good decisions. Do you know your brain is the most complicated organ in the universe? There's nothing as complex as the human brain, nothing. Uh, it's estimated we have 100 billion nerve cells, and each nerve cell is connected to other nerve cells by up to 40,000 individual connections between cells, which means you actually have more connections in your brain than there are stars in the universe. Information in your brain travels at about 268 miles an hour, unless, of course, you're drunk. Then things slow down. Now, even though your brain is only 2% of your body's weight, about three pounds, it uses 20 to 30% of the calories you consume, which is why nutrition is so important. If you eat a lot, a lot of fast food, you're going to have a fast food mind. That is not what you want. So whenever you eat something, think it's going to feed the health of my brain. And I think the brain is the hardware to your soul. I, have, I wrote a book about that, and I've just seen when you damage someone's brain, you damage their ability to act in a consistent, loving, predictable way. On average, you lose 85,000 neurons a day, brain cells a day. And you know what? You can accelerate that process with your behavior, or you can decelerate it. Now, I'm 56. I don't know about you, but when AARP started sending me stuff in the mail, <laughs> it was highly irritating. Because I feel as young as I did when I was 18 with just a little bit better judgment. So I really like this age, but I don't want to do anything to accelerate my aging process. If anything, I want to decelerate it. And I think that's why my shows are very popular because people get it. Yeah, what can I do today? All right, brain health. It's really easy. In fact, I feel even really a little dumb because it's so easy. It's two things. The same with your body. You avoid things that hurt it. <laughs> and you engage in regular brain healthy habits. So let's talk about it. So brain injuries, this should be obvious, right? Brain is soft, skull is hard. Your brain is the hardware of your soul. If you hurt your brain, you're going to have trouble, perhaps even eternal trouble. Now, that's why the Bible says don't judge, because God knows about all of this. Drugs and alcohol. Again, it should be obvious, except I know many of you listening to me right now think of alcohol as a health food.
I really hate to break this to you. I gotta have my two glasses of red wine every day. Doctor says I have to do it because your doctor is a lush. <laughs> Study from Johns Hopkins. People who drink every day have a smaller brain. And when it comes to the brain, size matters. <laughs> There's so many other ways to get those benefits. Uh, from the phytonutrients found in red wine, you do not need to go to the wine. When I look at brains of people who drink every day, it is not good. Obesity, we've talked about that. Sleep apnea. Smoking, the number one preventable cause of death in the United States. Kills 500,000 people every year, and smoking is bad for your brain. Can you tell the skin of a smoker? Why, because it's wrinkled and discolored. You know, it does exactly the same thing to your brain. It is not good for you. High blood pressure, the number two preventable cause of death in the United States. Why? Because it constricts blood flow and decreases blood flow to major organs, including your brain. High blood pressure is a major risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. If you want to prevent Alzheimer's disease, look at the list and go, I need to be staying away from these things. Diabetes is a disaster for brain function. Why? Because it is a blood vessel disease. Your brain not only uses 20 to 30% of the calories you consume, it uses 20 to 30% of all the blood in your body. Anything that damages your blood vessels is damaging your brain and putting you at risk for Alzheimer's disease. High sugar diets. Sugar is toxic. Um, it increases inflammation in your body, which we think is one of the major causes of Alzheimer's disease. High sugar diets disrupt your blood sugar. It increases erratic brain cell firing, and it's addictive. Environmental toxins. So if you've had a flood in your house and you have mold, that can affect your brain in a very negative way. If um, you're an indoor painter, it's often very toxic for brain function. If you pick up painting when you retire, please get great ventilation in your studio. Otherwise, we'll actually see your brain start to deteriorate. Chronic stress. So just go through 2008 and 2009 in our economy. But what we know is people who are exposed to chronic stress, it actually kills cells in the memory centers of your brain and releases certain hormones that put more fat around your belly. So this year, we're going to teach everyone how to have a very thoughtful, scientifically-based stress management program. Lack of exercise. I know some of you just hate that. But if you got to do the whole plan for it to work. And I think exercise is really easy. Four or five times a week, walk 30 minutes a day, and walk like you're late. <laughs> and if you want to lose weight, burst. Four minutes during that 30 minutes, walk as fast as you can, or run as fast as you can for just a minute. And they found that's actually better for you than running for 30 minutes. So it's that high intensity burst for like four minutes. Don't tell me you don't have time for this, like Dr. Hyman said. You have a whole bunch of time when you're dead. <laughs> Too much pleasure. It's like, what? We have pleasure centers in our brain. It's an area in the brain called the nucleus accumbens. It produces a chemical called dopamine, and when it gets pressed with a Cinnabon, <laughs> you really like it. So sugar presses on it. Cocaine presses on it. Internet gambling presses on it. Uh, internet pornography presses on it. Um, lots of things press on it. But if you push the happiness button too much, 
or too often, pretty soon it begins to wear out. And then it takes more and more pleasure in order for you to feel anything at all. So that's where addictions happen, where you wear out your pleasure center. So you need to be careful with things like email and text messaging and scary movies and really decadent foods that are pushing on this area of your brain. Otherwise, you then will lose control. That's what happens with an addiction where your pleasure center hijacks your brain and the front part of your brain, that most human thoughtful part of your brain that is your brain's break, it starts to get weaker and weaker. All right, so how do you have a better brain? Engage in regular brain healthy habits. This first one is critical. Social connections, being part of a group, being part of a family, part of a church, part of a small group. When you are surrounded by other people who have the same values and they have the same health habits, you're going to do so much better. When we isolate ourselves as a species, we were designed for group living. We were not designed to be alone. When people get alone, they die early. So being part of a community like Saddleback and taking it a step further, being part of a small group, you will be so much more successful if you do the Daniel plan connected with other people. And you'll be even more successful if you're the health champion. New learning. Whenever you learn something new, your brain makes a new connection. When you stop learning, your brain actually starts to disconnect itself. So you always want to be learning. And don't think of doing crossword puzzles as, well, this is my brain exercise for the week. Because just doing crossword puzzles is like going to the gym and doing right bicep curls and then leaving. <laughs> you have to do many different things to work out many different areas of your brain. Great diet. We've talked about this. Now, the, the rules, just so I can reinforce what Dr. Hyman said, high quality calories. Stop eating toxic food that's bad for you. People go, empty calories, nonsense. They're toxic calories. So high quality food. Lots of water. Your brain is 80% water. Anything that dehydrates you, like alcohol and caffeine, um, is not good for you. Now, it doesn't mean you can't ever have another cup of coffee, but if you have more than two a day, it's too much. Okay? It begins to work on that happiness button and is disrupting the chemistry in your brain. So, great calories, water, lean protein, complex carbohydrates. So good carbohydrates, which means low glycemic, so I know Mark mentioned that, means carbohydrates that don't raise your blood sugar. So think, skip the potatoes, white rice, most bread, because it's, it's got very high glycemic numbers. Um, sugar, obviously. Um, so high fiber, low glycemic carbohydrates, healthy fat. We had this discussion in the back, and I'm so proud of Saddleback. When I first got here, and saw what they were serving to the pastors in the back, in the pastor room, I'm like, you're trying to kill these people. <laughs> I mean, I know they're pastors and they're saved, so let's send them to heaven early. <laughs> no, it's not the plan. And I just took a picture with Rick in the back. They have all these um, fresh vegetables with hummus and guacamole, and guacamole made with mostly just avocados. And it, was, it was perfect. So, fat doesn't make you fat, right? Fat plus sugar makes you fat, right? So, healthy fats, omega-3 fatty acids. Eat from the rainbow, as Mark said, foods in your diet with many different color, but that does not mean Skittles. <laughs> I have people, they come to my office and they have a blueberry muffin. It's like, Dr. Amen, are you proud of me? I have a, it's like, are you crazy? Just because it has blueberry something and it does not mean it's good for you. 
think. <laughs> Why is cal I think of calories like money. Now, if you talk to my wife, she would tell you I am not cheap. But I'm a value spender. If they waste my money, I'm upset. I want good value for what I spend my money on. I'm very much like my dad. Actually, my dad is here. Say hi, stand up. And my mom is here too. And I'm like my dad that way. We don't mind spending money on things that have value, right? Now, you can only have so many calories a day. Anybody who tells you calories don't count, they're crazy. Because <laughs> it's about energy, right? The average 50-year-old man can eat about 2,200 calories a day. The average 50-year-old woman can have about 1,800 calories a day. If you eat more calories, then your body burns, you get fat, okay? Now, a calorie is not a calorie, right? A Twinkie is not the same thing as a spinach salad with wild salmon and blueberries and walnuts, and walnuts not cooked in butter and sugar. <laughs> so you're beginning to get the plan here. Whole food that is not tormented. And then there's so many brain-healthy herbs and spices we'll, we'll tell you about. But wise calories? Omega-3s. So omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. We call those fall fats. So if you think of soybean oil or corn oil, they are pro-inflammatory fall fats. Why? Because they're getting ready to store energy on your body and kill you early versus omega-3 fatty acids that are spring fats because they energize you. They help to heal you. And what are in omega-3s? Things like wild salmon, spinach, and walnuts, and avocados. Now, my dad is an avocado farmer, but I just have to say that disclaimer. Um, avocados, Chloe, our daughter, calls avocados God's butter like that. Targeted supplements. And, and so the supplement thing is very simple. You should take a multiple vitamin every day. Why? Because very few of you have balanced diets. I think of it like insurance. You should take high quality fish oil every day. And if you're allergic to fish, flaxseed oil is the next choice. But for quality reasons, fish oil is better, in my opinion, than flaxseed oil. Um, and you should have your vitamin D level checked. You'll notice in your important numbers uh, to do that. And then supplements depend on the type. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, throughout the program. Green tea. So if you go, well, what should I drink? Mark talked about telomeres. That's the length of your DNA. People who drink three cups of green tea a day have longer, younger looking jeans. So I don't know, I like my jeans. I want to stay in them for a longer time. <laughs> Exercise uh, is the fountain of youth. Let me talk about this concept. Blood flow is very important. I already told you how important blood flow is to your body, right? Your brain uses like almost a third of it. Anything that decreases blood flow is bad for your brain. I used to say, whatever's good for your heart is good for your brain. And then I wrote my book, The Brain in Love, and I realized oh, I was missing something. Whatever's good for your heart is good for your brain is good for your genitals. It's all about blood flow. Whatever's bad for your heart is bad for your brain is bad for your genitals. Did you know that 40% of 40-year-old men have erectile dysfunction? I don't know about you, but that should horrify you. <laughs> Why do you think every time you turn on the television, there's an advertisement for the little blue pill or one of its sisters? <laughs> it's because we have this rash of blood flow problems in our body. This means 
40% of 40-year-olds have brain dysfunction. And 70% of 70-year-olds have erectile dysfunction, which means 70% of 70-year-olds have brain dysfunction. You can reverse this. You saw how Mark showed this slide in just three months, the difference that people had in their bodies and in their genes. I love the concept Mark talks about as food is information and it's telling your genes to live longer or not. So you are actually programming yourself with what you put in your body to live longer or not. Deep breathing is very important. I'm going to give you the short version of how to prevent a panic attack. Do it with me. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Take five seconds now to blow it out. One, two, three, four, five. Take another deep breath. Hold it. Five seconds. Blow it out. One, two, three, four, five. Do that ten times in a row. Your panic will con consistently start to diminish. You should do that little exercise, ten deep breaths, twice a day. Your level of stress will go down, in part because you're focused on being healthy. And guess what? Oxygen is critical to brain function. Anytime, if the near drowning scans I've done are disastrous for brain function. You need great oxygenation to your brain. So very simple, and we'll work out. Now, I know some of you are like, oh my God, isn't that close to meditation? <laughs> I'm Christian. I don't do meditation. I know, and Mark, uh, that guy who actually talked about yoga, I almost like had a heart attack in the back. I'm like, oh no, don't do that. The fact is, there are a lot of other smart people and learning techniques like deep breathing, prayer, meditation have been shown scientifically. I have actually published two studies. Maybe I should have disclosed that to Pastor Rick on how meditation enhances frontal lobe function. Okay. All meditations start with breathing and getting control of your breath. Gratitude. I love this one. I am so grateful that you are here today. So grateful I'm here today. <laughs> one of the exercises we're going to have you do in your daily journal, every day, write down five things you're grateful for. Your emotions, your feelings, go are a result of where you bring your attention. So if you focus on all the people that have hurt you in your life, you focus on all the people that have picked on you in your life, you'd be angry. You'd be very unhappy. So I discovered many years ago, I can take any person I know and within five minutes make them cry. <laughs> I'm like, what a skill. And it's just by the questions that I ask you. You know, like, why are you here? Tell me about some of the traumas in your life. And if you get them into that little part of their head that is sad, they will be sad. But you know, the opposite is true. If I get you to focus, so if I focus on my grandfather's death, saddest day of my life, like in a minute, I'll be just like terrible and feel empty and awful. So I don't do that very much. But if I go to like all the fun times we had, or if I think about when I was a child and my dad would take us places and play in the park, I'm like, I'm like so happy, right? It's where you bring your attention that determines 
how you feel. So if you're filled with bitterness, you're going to be sicker. You'll be physically sicker than if you focus on all the love that God and all of God's angels, like your father or your mother, have given to you. Are you with me? Focus is important. Five things you're grateful for every day. The research says people who do that notice a significant difference in their level of happiness in three weeks. Prayer. I'm friends with Andy Newberg, who uh, is a famous brain scientist at Thomas Jefferson University, and he studied Tibetan monks and Franciscan nuns during prayerful states. And what he found is it actually enhanced the judgment part of their brain. So the most human thoughtful part of their brain is enhanced, plus you're doing the connection, right? We talked about connection and how important is that. Sleep. Sleep is critical. I've had uh, conversations with this uh, with a number of my very special patients. If you go days without sleeping, you'll never get your cravings under control. People who sleep less than six hours at night have lower overall blood flow to their brain. Low blood flow to your brain. What do you think? Good decisions, bad decisions. See, this is not that hard. Are you with me? So in your handout, there are 19 tips on getting great sleep. So I try to emphasize none of this is hard. Chloe, our seven-year-old, and I, we constantly play this game at home. This is good for my brain or bad for my brain. And I, I had the privilege of being in her first grade class last year, talking to them about brain health, and I said, well, play the game with me. And it's amazing. All those things I just showed you, both good and bad, they got 90% of them, right? Avocados. Chloe will give you two thumbs up. God's butter. Organic blueberries, two thumbs up. What about non-organic blueberries? Not good, they hold too many toxins. So you want to be thinking about it. Playing football, good or bad for your brain? Bad for your brain. It's not hard. 